The book of Ephesians uh, was not written to the -the run-of-the-mill Christian. This letter, this epistle, was written to the faithful. It was written to the saints. I wonder if that's not why the majority today don't get it. Why they don't understand this overcoming life. Why they don't understand the authority that we have in Christ over the devil. The Lord has provided for us total, complete victory over this world, over self, and over the devil, and even over death. But you don't hear very many talking about an overcoming life today. You don't hear that message of the overcomer. You don't hear a message that is the fullness. All you hear today is this message, just do your best. That's not what the Bible teaches. And this book, this epistle, was addressed to the saints that were at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now the Bible talks about those that are called, those that are chosen, and those that are faithful. These are three classes of people, the called, the chosen, and the faithful. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. It's not enough to be called. Jesus said many are called, few are chosen. But once you're chosen, then you have to be faithful. And this letter was written to those that were called, chosen out of the called, and had been faithful. So if you find yourself in that place where you've been faithful, then this book, this, I should say, this letter, should be very valuable to you. You should be able to understand and comprehend what this letter is, what Paul the Apostle was sharing. And according to Paul, he said this was a mystery. Listen to what he says here in in verse uh, 9. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed, in himself. It's a mystery. Now, if you go on in all through the book of Ephesians, you'll see that Paul the Apostle constantly uses this word mystery. Over and over he uses this word mystery. And he makes it very clear that this mystery, that this revelation was not revealed to the people. It was revealed to the apostles and the prophets. And then the apostles and prophets would share it with the people. That's what Paul said. Paul said that that the, the apostles and the prophets had received this revelation. Look what it says. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5 which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This is not something that the Holy Ghost was revealing to the people. 
it amazes me today how confused the ministry is today. And I don't mean just the, the leaders in the ministry. I mean the people overrunning, the, the pew is overrunning the pulpit. We're living in a time where the common, or, or I shouldn't say common, but the, where the pew, where the people that sit in the pews, the congregation is taking upon themselves positions they were never given. And in a lot of ways, we're finding today that the church is a lot like Jannies and Jamborees. In a lot of ways, it's, there's a resistance where the people came and said to Moses, you take too much upon yourself. It wasn't just, it wasn't the people altogether that were rebelling against God's leaders. It was the corrupt leaders that were under Moses that were over the people. The ones that were rebellious and jealous of Moses' position were stirring the people up. Which is the exact same thing we see with when Jesus was crucified. It was the Pharisees, it was the religious leaders that stirred the people up. It was the religious leaders that stirred the people up. So, as we see today, it's going to happen all over again. We see in the book of Song of Solomon that the watchmen that go about the city are going to abuse the bride of Christ and and it says they're going to tear her veil from her. So it's the leadership today that is jealous and envious because they don't understand the truth. God does not work with everybody in the same way. He's given certain positions. He's given certain places where he's given gifts to the body of Christ that have operations and gifts and everybody doesn't do the same thing. And the, you know, the hand needs the foot and the foot needs the eye and so on and so forth. The body working together. We all need one another. But I'll tell you this, the hand is not the eye. The eye is not the hand. We need to find our place in the body of Christ. We need to know who we are in Christ. So, the next time you open this precious letter, Ephesians, remember, it was a letter that was addressed to the saints of God, the faithful in Christ Jesus. That might be why you're not understanding the overcoming life. Because this book of Ephesians is all about the overcoming life. And how Jesus was raised up over all power, all principalities. And not only was he, but according to Paul the Apostle, it says here, in verse uh, 6 of chapter 2, well, let's start at verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's the same power that raised Christ up. Verse 20 of chapter 1 of Ephesians says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in, in heavenly places. And then it says he quickened and he raised up these that were quickened to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is an overcoming life, folks. Not just the mundane. It's not just the 
doing your best. It's not just uh, trying to be a Christian. No, this is a victorious, overcoming, conquering, wonderful, not only life, but experience. It's, 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 it's wonderful to live this overcoming life having authority in Jesus Christ. God bless.